Hey, what's up, World2 family? My name is Rocky Vilas, and I'm back again for another video. Last time I was here, I did the convention box test. So if you want to learn on that, go ahead and check that one out. But today is going to be different. We're going to do something in the pipe rack. So we're going to show you how I knock out a pipe rack production shot. So come on, let's go. Production shot on the pipe rack. All right, guys, so first thing first, we gotta check out our argon. So you gotta make sure that's on point first. So co let's come over here. All right, this is how I set up my argon. First thing I do is check if it's full or if it got anything in there. If you shake it, it's too light. Might not have anything in there. If you shake it, it's kind of stiff. It's pretty full. So also, these things might be broken out there in the field, but you know, as long as you have that little shake method, it should be good. And then over here, I mean, it just tells you the uh, PSI on it, but other than that, Crank that thing open and start setting your, your PSI. Me, I like mine around 80, but if I purge, I want it like around 100 or you know a little bit over 100, depending on how big the pipe is. But that's me, I like, I like my R gonna be shooting up. After all that's done, now it's time to suit up and knock out this pipe. All right guys, so now it's time to get suited up. Put your hard hat, make sure it's fitted right. Safety glasses, 100% gloves. Before you touch anything, make sure you got the gloves on. So what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna expect the harness, cause gotta make sure everything's right on this harness. Make sure it has no defects. Make sure it's good. It hasn't been disturbed. No, no burnt holes on it as well. It's looking pretty good. Because there's, if there's anything on here, it destroys this, you know what I mean? So, whenever it's time to go snapping, it's going to probably might snap on you if it's got some defects on it. So, you got to check that first because your life's your priority. No one's going to take care of it as much as you are. So, let's put this bad boy on. All right, so after you put your harness on, make sure you feel comfortable with it. You can move around in it. Stretch, stretch yourself out. That way you don't have any, like you don't get caught up and you get uncomfortable, all right? So make sure it's good. Make sure your laundries are always good. Some places, not all, you could wear your soft hood. You know what I mean? So you don't gotta wear your hard hat, but me, since I like to keep this one clean, I like to use my old one. You know, I'm gonna put this one up and use this one. Some places you could have like your plastic one and like they won't really trip about like having it like cut. That way you could. You know what I mean? Have a bump cap and have it all together. But some places they're gonna have to require you to wear a halo. So you're gonna have to put this on there like this. And that's how you gotta weld. But like I said, uh, sometimes you could get away with just wearing the hood and you know, it'll be, it'll be better, but I mean, it does make sense. Safety first, right? You want to always take care of your head. It's just in case someone's working overhead and they hit you, you wear covered. So better safe than sorry. All right, guys. So before climbing this ladder, I know a lot of people get complacent sometimes and they just climb it so quick. They don't even think about it. But man, that's your life on the line. If you're going to climb all the way to the top, you're always going to have three points of contact. So always make sure you got two hands on it at all times and one on your foot. That way you could be good and stabilized climbing up the ladder and coming down. And you want to tie off as quick as you can. And whenever you move, I always tie off before you take off the other one. That's a hundred percent tie off. All right, guys. First and foremost, before I even get to talking. We gotta be tied off, so. Let's talk about this, this pipe rack, man. So, okay, look, sometimes it could be even more tighter than this, and it could be more spacious than this. You know, it's all about where you land at. But I got my pipe right now tacked up on just two tacks. I got it at the top and at the bottom. The reason why I have it like that is because I don't wanna have my tie-in on the sides, you know what I mean? I'd rather have them like up here or on this side over here, you know what I mean? So, 
me, I don't do tines on the sides. I just do it right at the top and the bottom. And for it not to warp, you know, because you're not going to go just do one side. You know, it might warp a little bit, even though it's carbon. I like to do a little bit, like, you know, a little bit less than halfway. You know, I'll run the bead. And then on this side, too, I'll run the bead. And then, like, I'll clean it up. And then I'll run it all the way up because I know it's not going to warp. You know what I mean? It's going to be steady. So that's a little trick there for y'all that, that, that I do. You know what I mean? And I don't get warps on it, so it seems to work. But for this pipe right here, I got a 532 gap on here, but I got 70S2 wire. I got a, a, a 332 and I got a 18. The reason why I'm going to use 332, that's just because in case I need to use that. You know what I mean? Unless it does close up a little bit. You know, I don't want my... I got a loose 532, so it shouldn't be a problem, but just in case, you know, you just better be safe than sorry, like I said. So uh, for the root, I'm going to be running about 100, 105. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's get to it. All right, guys, so for the pipe, I'm running at 100 amps. I like to always tackle the difficult side first because I know I could always grab it with my um, with the easier side. But for this pipe, I got it tacked up at the bottom good, so I don't got to worry about that that much, right? But um, it's basically just like any other pipe going up. All right, guys, so you see that I stopped. And the reason I'm not going to grind this is because, um, I mean, you could always heat up the fish eye and get it out. And you could always pull out, but at the same time, you might still have a fish eye in there. But you could always just, just like, you know, warm it up, warm it up a little bit, and then you'll see it like come out and everything fused together. Then that's when you can start pushing in metal in it. So uh, that's why I don't use the grinder, cause, especially because sometimes you just can't fit it. All right, and then for the other side, I'm going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch my body, and I'm going to get it with my right hand, because, I mean, right here, I don't need to use my left. So I'm going to just do it all with my right. That way it will be easier for me. For these type of pipes, I mean, I like to freehand everything. I freehand all the way into the, the cap. You know, I don't, if I, if I, if I have enough room to, uh, to cap it, I mean, I go ahead and walk it. But if I don't, I could just, I, I just like to freehand. I'm just a freehand junkie. I just, that's how I've been doing this since I started, so. And I'm just a freehand junkie. I'm just a freehand junkie. All right, guys, that's the route. Now we're gonna do the uh, hot pass. It is pretty hot in here, so I'm sweating a little bit, but. Now it's time to get even more hot. We're gonna crank it up to 150, 160. So we'll see how much I sweat in a little bit. But let's do it.
All right, guys, that's the uh, hot pass. Uh, now we're gonna do the fills. The fills, I'm gonna run them about 180, uh, 175. I'm gonna see how to put the fills right now because the pipe is hot. So um, that's the thing. That's one more thing that y'all guys gotta watch out for too. It's like when that pipe gets hot and you're running at like 140 or 140, whatever temperature, just know that it's like gonna be a little bit harder because that pipe's already hot. So either lower it down a little bit. All you gotta do is just look at that puddle. So if the puddle looks too watery, like droopy watery, man, turn that heat down because you're probably gonna either like sink in the sink in the middle or uh, probably get some suck back anywhere, the bottom or top. You know what I mean? So wash that puddle. That's the key to the. That's basically the key to welding. If you know how to wash the puddle and manipulate it, you know what I mean? Like with the amperage and and make sure you hit them walls on that hot pass too. Like you'll be fine. All right, guys. And if y'all want y'all's cap to look good out there in the field, if I were y'all, I'll get a tiger paw and I will uh, grind it all the way around on both sides of the world, not on the world, but on the side of the worlds. All right, guys, that was it. Pipe rack production shot. Take all this off. All right, guys, so there you have it. Like, comment, and subscribe if you liked it. Share if you can. And if y'all like the World Cartel decals, uh, go ahead and go to worldcartel.com. They have plenty of more stickers that you can slap on your hard hat. And if you want to go ahead and follow me, follow me on Instagram at Rocky Aviles, uh, Snapchat Rocky So, and on Facebook Rocky Aviles as well. Other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>